But even more than just that, we're here to remember you and what you did so long ago. Father, as we take a look at this story this morning, as we spend time yet again in worship with you, guide our hearts, guide our minds, as we continue to look towards Jesus in and through all things. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 You know, to say that Jefferson was excited would be an understatement. Probably he'd be more along the lines of someone that was very giddy because they had just signed the pact that gave the United States the Louisiana Purchase. And the day that he put his signature on those papers, there was only one name that came to mind to lead the group across into the and that was that of Meriwether Lewis. Seems like a name that we don't hear much of anymore today. But as Lewis started planning, the Congress at that time decided to give him the title of captain to marshal his troops into success. But he remembers the past like often we forget. We just need to stop and remember our past. He remembered a man by the last name of Clark, who happened to be his superior officer when he was in the military. Clark was retired at, that, at this time, but Lewis went and convinced Clark to come with him on this expedition. However, as Paul Harvey used to say, now here's the rest of the story. Yes. What, what was done wrong was this. Jefferson gave Lewis and Clark a bad picture of what was to come. How often are we that way where we say, well, you know, it will be the same over there as it is here. Jefferson did that to Lewis and Clark and said, oh, boys, you don't have to worry because out west is the same as it is here in the east. According to Lewis's diaries, he's, he wrote that three months into their great expanse of a journey, they could see what seemed like rolling foothills. Little did they know that these foothills were actually the Rocky Mountains until they finally got there and they went whoops <laughs> we've got a problem and even they started scaling those and Clark in his journals records that he was expecting that they'd go over and that it would just be a simple incline down to the Pacific Ocean we know now that that was not the case. But what's interesting with their journey, Lewis records that the time that they get to what now is known as the Limhi Pass, it was at that moment in time that panic ensued throughout the whole group because they realized that they were in uncharted territory. That's what we are, we're in that too. We're on a journey just like they are, like they were. What they learned is that it was only with teaming up with the native population that they were finally able to succeed. If they did not meet a young lady by the name of Sacagawea, they would have never succeeded on their trip. But what's interesting is this. As they got to the Lemhi Pass and panic ensued through the group, there was one person that stayed calm, cool, and collected. And that was that of Sack Julia. The reason why she stayed so calm is because when she got on that pass, she knew that she was home. Because it was that 
exact location that many years ago she had gotten stolen away from her home and became a slave. Isn't that our story too? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But not only that, God continues to remind us you're called to team up with those around you because they know the territory better than you ever will. But even more than just that, we need to remember this that God has his people in every time, in every location, and in every place. Remember this, if you're taking notes, write this down. The called are the chosen, and the chosen are the called. Remember the story of Israel and Moses is taking the Israelites out. They're met by Jethro and the Midianites. And the Midians, not the Midianites. Let's make sure we don't get the stories crossed over. But God has his people telling the message of the everlasting gospel. And from the very beginning, the everlasting gospel is this, follow the Lamb. Amen. Follow the Lamb no matter where He leads, because even though it seems that He's leading us into the darkest of times, it is not dark because He is with us. Amen. When the light is with us, there is no darkness, Amen. because darkness cannot stay when Jesus is with us. Amen. If you think that there's darkness, look around. Jesus is standing right there. If he's not standing there, look up. Because that means he's carrying you. Amen. Hopefully he's always carrying you. But so we're told of a time and place that seemed to be in immense darkness, where Jesus comes right on time. Jesus is never early. He is never late. His timing is precise, because guess what? The reason why it's not precise is because it's not our time, it's His. Amen. That's why it continues to be prophetic and forever time, because it's based on him. Because isn't that what history is? It's not our story. It's it his story. story that we happen to be actors and a part of. That we have such an amazing gift to be able to go around and say, not do you know the Seventh-day Adventist Church and Ellen White but no, do you know my best friends? Do you know who Jesus is and how much he loves us? Amen. But from what we can see from history, when Jesus came, it was one of the darkest periods of time. But what's amazing is it was one of the safest periods of time as well. Where the gospel could be sent around the world. And there wasn't going to be problems at the moment. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. But we're introduced first to a very interesting group. Not to a bunch of priests. <laughs> not to a bunch of kings. But to a bunch of shepherds. Mm -hmm. And they're with what? They're sheep. they're sheep. Now we don't know what time of year this was. But we do know this. It wasn't during the winter. If it was during the winter, this is how I picture it. It's a Virginia winter. <laughs> <laughs> but so they're watching their sheep. Gabriel comes and he gives them the good news. They're scared. Here's what I love about this story. The <laughs> shepherds are scared. The sheep are loving it. <laughs> Do you know why the sheep love it? Because they know they're shepherds. When we're with the shepherd, we have nothing to be afraid of. Amen. But so, Gabriel gives the good news. Angels can't. Oh, I wish I could have been there. I'm looking forward to, to 
the heavens, IMAX or whatever it is. I want to see this in person. The angels can't withhold themselves, and it says that they spring forward with a multitude of voices and lights that lights up the whole countryside. With how close it was to Bethlehem, I'm surprised people didn't see the light show. But here's what we get wrong. We talk about how they go down and they go to a stable. Is that, is that the true story? No. no. Here's what we miss with this story. Okay, we do know this. Okay, Joseph takes Mary from where? Nazareth. From Nazareth down to Bethlehem, not Bethany. <laughs> Bethany is just a couple miles away from from there, but takes her down, and there is no room available, mm -hmm. not just in the inn, in the town itself. But when they finally get to where we have this dialogue with the inn, there is no room, but the owner says, Okay, hold on just a second, I've got an idea. I am building something right now, it's not much, but you can have it. What they would do back during those times is they would dig out the hillside and they would make a cave. And this is where they would store their animals and this is also where the family would live as well. As a house is being built on top. So this is where we see the shepherds coming to worship Jesus. I will bring some young lambs to, to offer to him. We don't know. We're, we're that part of the story that it's not told. But they go and then they leave and then the wise men show up, right? No. No. <laughs> no, that's, that's where we've got the story at all. Because it wasn't until about two years later that the wise men and you know, it's, it's interesting, that's, that's where we come into our story that we're taking a look at this morning. I hope you have your Bibles with you. Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2, starting in verse 1. It says this, it says, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king. We've got to make sure we've got that point right. Magi from the south arrived in Jerusalem. Right? No. 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 Oh, the east! Thank you! That's a very, very good, important thing that we've got to make sure that we're... And they arrived in where? In Jerusalem. And they're asking a question. Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. Interesting, as we're taking a look at that story, you know, so often during the Christmas season, we sing that song, We Three Kings, and we the song something now. Do we know how many magi there was? No. 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 We, don't. we don't know how many there were. All we know is that there were people that came yeah. to yeah. worship. Yeah. Here's what's interesting, and what we don't actually make account for is so often we're told that these people were secular people that had no connection with who Jesus was. But it's actually wrong. The word magi, correctly interpreted in both the Hebrew and Greek, refers to scholars of their own religion. Which these, these scholars, these kings, as we would look at them now, would have been known as followers of the Lamb. But here's what's, what's even more interesting with this. We see that these people came from the east. Mm -hmm. Now that's a large, large area when you take yeah. a look at Israel. Over the last number of years, 
scholars have been stumbling across some very interesting things. More recently, probably within the last 10 to 15 years, there have been some that have actually published actual documentation that have said, we have actually found where we believe that a chunk of the wise men came from. And they found that a chunk of them actually came from China. Mm. Yes. They found this out because of the fact that the scrolls of Balaam, the scrolls of Isaiah, and other prophets known to Israel were actually translated into Chinese and actually brought over to them. That they were studying these scrolls at that time when this was happening. But even more than that, we also have this reference from great explorers like Marco Polo as well, when he met with some of, some of these emperors of China. But what's interesting with, with China itself is up to the time of Jesus' death, they were still practicing the sacrificial system. Mm. God has his people all over the place. Yes. It's, yes. Not, it's not just us. That's right. yeah. We're part of the call. We're part of the chosen. Mm -hmm. But it is all humanity yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. that are a part of this. Yeah. Yeah. But even as you take a look at China, there is still evidence of altars on the border where sacrifices would actually take place. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting with putting history into perspective, mm -hmm. where we look at who was in China the same time that Jesus was here. Anyone have an idea about that? Who was it who Jesus' contemporary was? Mm -hmm. Buddha was one of them. But that of Confucius. Confucius was during the same time that Jesus was here. And this is where it was because of Confucius that he was the one that took the Chinese people off of the truth and onto his own. Where God has his people, Satan always has a counterfeit. But what we need to remember, <coughs> Satan's counterfeit is nothing because the gospel is rooted so deep in the history of this world that we have nothing to fear. Amen. 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 We need to make sure that we are buried within the gospel of Jesus. Amen. That's what's going to take us home, but that's who is going to take us home. But so they asked Herod this question, continuing on in verse 3. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. When truth comes to the surface, if you know that you've been doing wrong, God convicts the heart no matter what. And everyone is terrified. Yeah. Herod was terrified even more because they were saying, the king of the Jews. And he's like, well, is this Rome that's coming to take over my position? But here's, what, here's a lesson for us in this modern time that we need to learn. It's that of this. He had the scriptures before him, but he chose not to be involved in what God had given the only way home is through the directions of the book. Amen. But, I have to throw out this caveat. You can have the book, you can read it day and night, and you can have it memorized to a T, and you will never go home. Because it takes a moment-by-moment -moment relationship with the one that is the book. Amen. In order to go home, and that's Jesus himself. Amen. That's why when Jesus comes, from Genesis to Revelation, he's talking to us as a church, corporate us. Not talking to the rest of the world. But he comes and he looks at, he's going to look at many of us and he's going to say, 
you had the truth. You taught the truth. You thought you lived the truth, but you didn't know the truth because you weren't part of me. If you don't walk with me, how can you say that you're with me? Every single one of our activities need to be one that is grounded in Jesus. So that when others see us, whether this is Pentecostal or Baptist or other Seventh-day Adventist or Lutheran or Bethanist or whoever, they say it's not a denomination-based, it is a Lamb-based following. Amen. Because they know Him, they love Him, and we see Him with them. Yeah. Yeah. How often can people say, that they see Jesus walking, actually walking with us. Oh. Amen. 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 That's what this season's all about. Yeah. Is it's about remembering the child and following the lamb, following the child. Amen. Not being like Herod and the rest of Jerusalem and being so afraid. But following Jesus. Amen. Gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what has been written by the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the leaders of Judah. For out of you shall come forth the ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi and determined from them the exact time the star appeared. We need to stop here because there's a very important lesson in that text. Yes. You can be with the truth, you can know the truth, but you're part of Satan's chosen. The priests knew the truth, they said they lived the truth, but they were paid off by Herod. Mm -hmm. They were part of his government. They should have been looking for Jesus. They should have been at those city gates waiting for the, these religious teachers from other lands to come. But they weren't. How often is it that we do the same as the religious leaders of Jesus' time? And we keep saying, oh, we're waiting for a sign, we're waiting for a sign. And people keep coming and going through our doors, we're waiting for a sign. And Jesus goes, even if the sign was to slap you upside the back of the head, you still wouldn't get it, would you? It's time to wake up and realize it's not about us. Yes, we are part of the chosen, we're part of the called. But if we're not following the Lamb, that's not life. We need to follow the Lamb. We need to continue to show people Jesus. That's what it's all about. Amen. Verse 8. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. And when you have found him, report to me. So that I too may come and worship. Interesting, isn't it? Oh, just let me know. And I'll come too. I'll bring gifts. Don't we do that too? I'll come up my own terms, but not on yours, Jesus. Your, your terms are just a little too hard. Jesus says, hey, if it's too hard for you, then there's no life for you. Mm. It's that simple. <laughs> Herod had a chance to come and worship, to come and be changed, mm -hmm. but he made a choice not to. Yeah. Now, can you imagine how history would be <coughs> if he made the opposites? Yeah. Looking at the what if. What if he said, hey, 
I'm coming with you. That could have been the turn point for one of the most evil kings during that time. But he doesn't do that. He stays. When Jesus calls, he tells us, don't stay put. Keep going. Keep moving forward. Don't let the pettiness of others and the pettiness of what you may see around you hold you down and hold you back. Amen. Go forward in me because that is what I've called you to do. Amen. Follow the Lamb no matter what the cost. Is that's what life is all about. We have to count the cost now. If we don't count the cost now, when the time comes and we're called to pay the price, we're not going to be ready. And I have to tell you, I have to throw up my heart right now. The day is coming soon. Where if we are not ready and we're not counting the cost now, we're not going to be ready then. Amen. Amen. Because we're, if you're not watching what's going on in Washington, we're losing our religious liberties very fast. Don't watch them. Watch the man. Jesus will take care of us. But we have to focus on Him. Amen. If we're not grounded in Him, we will be washed away because we haven't made the choice. Moment by moment, day by day, make the choice to stand. But even more than that, make the choice to stand together. Not over windows, not over carpets. Not over parking lots, mm -hmm. but because of the name of the Lamb. Amen. That has always been and forever will be. We're just part of the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> After hearing the king, they went their way, talking about the wise men. And the star which they had seen in the east went on before them until yeah. it came and stood over the place where the child was. Now, I like how it puts it in the spirit of prophecy where it talks about that once this group of angels was done sharing the glad tidings with the shepherds. They formed together in what seemed as a star. How they could be in several places at several times, we don't know. Because we don't know where all these wise men came from. But they appeared to them as one of the most brilliant stars, even brighter than what some of our planets in our solar system are. God will use anything to get our attention. Sometimes it takes getting a donkey to get our attention. Let that donkey talk again. <laughs> so that our eyes will be opened and we'll finally realize that we are King James donkeys. <laughs> but when God opens our eyes, you know what the first thing that we see is? We don't see the donkey in front of us. We see the Lamb yeah. Himself. Yeah. Yeah. Follow the star because you're going into uncharted territory. You're going into areas that you will never expect because it's the journey of the Lamb where each wanders because just like the Magi, they saw, and it was almost like kids in a candy star. Ooh, look at that star. It's bigger and brighter than ever before. This must be the sign. And not, well, we'll think about it, but they got everything that they could. They, they were ready already. And they left. But after they, we don't know the time period after they're talking to Herod, but they see the star once again. Mm -hmm. 
Can you imagine that this group, like little kids, grabbing each other? Whoa, look at this, look at this. It's here again. And they get on their animals and they start to rise. Now, we're not told of any of this story, but just imagine what it would have been like seeing these different people riding animals that normally weren't seen going through downtown <laughs> Seeing these guys in brilliant robes. There's one thing we need to remember back during that time. Color within your garments was considered as a sign of class. Now we wear colors and we don't even think about it. Of course, some people go out and buy ripped jeans and faded t-shirts. I still don't understand that one. But it was shown as a sign of class. Shown even more as a sign of loyalty because of what you did. But they go, and they go to the very house where probably about two years before, down underneath, mm. that same, same state. Here, that same cave, the shepherds had gone to pay their allegiance mm -hmm. to Jesus, to the child. Mm -hmm. Now we're not told of what happened to the shepherds after that, but what we do know is this, is that they went out rejoicing yeah. because they met Jesus and their lives were never the same. But the wise men come to that house, knock on the door, Probably Mary, or well, probably Joseph opens the door, looks at him, and goes, <laughs> Wrong house! <laughs> Sounds like something we like to do. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want what you're, what you're giving. Joseph looks at him. I'm sorry. Can I help you? We're here to see your son. What son? We're here to see the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Mary's voice probably behind him. Just let him in, Joseph. Mm -hmm. Okay, dear. <laughs> Remember when the wife talks, you listen. They come in, and what we're told is they drop their gifts. Not just that they drop to their knees, they go full face down mm -hmm. the ground to worship the one that is ever more. Amen. Because they knew the moment that they got there that they're in the presence of the Creator himself. Amen. Amen. So, after coming into the house, they saw the child of Mary, his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, Mm -hmm. Spices that could very easily come from anywhere. Mm -hmm. But spices that were used specifically mm -hmm. in the embalming process. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The wise men knew because they studied the scrolls of what the eventual price that Jesus would have to pay. Mm -hmm. And so they're reminding them and they're reminding us mm -hmm. of what the whole story is about. Jesus came to pay a price and to make it full. But we just leave it at that. He came to show the rest of the universe that Satan has always been wrong. And it's our choice what we're going to do with the lamb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But specifically, they gave the gift of gold. To remind them the preciousness of this child. And to remind us that it is not what's attached to the value of a life. It's the life itself. Amen. Jesus came to fill our lives fully Amen. with his experience. Amen. But even more, these wise men gave these gifts because they were told they're going to have to leave fast. Mm -hmm. And they need something to live on. Yeah. But we're told right here, verse 12, 
They give the gifts, they go to sleep. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod. Smart when God speaks, you yeah, need to listen. Yeah, yeah. The Magi left their own for their own country by another way. In other words, be smart. If God tells you to go, don't go by Herod's palace. Go a different road. He'll, God has ways of leading us that we will never understand. But we need to trust that because he is God, follow his ways, even if we wonder about them. Amen. Magi are given a dream, same time. Now we see Joseph. Now when they had gone, they're already gone. Behold, an angel of the Lord, Gabriel himself, appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up. Very important. Take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. Now was it really Herod that's trying to destroy him? Satan. 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 It's interesting, especially as we talked about earlier, probably many months ago, in our time together looking at the beginning of the Gospel of John, where Jesus came, but Satan didn't perceive that he was there. He knew the scriptures, he knew the times, but he was off. And then he finally gets, whoa, he's here. Time to try to destroy him. When God speaks, timing is right. Amen. When he says something, we need to listen. Amen. Don't argue and say, well, this is not what you really want. This is what I think you want. Amen. We need to stop being spiritual teenagers and be willing to stop and say, hey, I'm at, well, I'm at fault, I'm wrong, you're right. Mm -hmm. So that we can go forward Amen. following the Lamb Amen. because that's the only way to survive in this life Amen. and the life to come. Amen. 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 But here's what's interesting with this part of the story. He tells them to go to a place, not just unexpected, but a place that would not be thought of yeah. that he yeah. would go. Because, hey, why would you go back to the very land that enslaved your people to start with? Mm. No! Plus, Egypt and Rome had a hatred against each other. Egypt said, nope, I want nothing to do with you, and so Rome came and destroyed them. Mm -hmm. This was around the same time. The angel sends them to the best place. Mm -hmm. They're given money to sustain them yeah. in the community mm -hmm. where they would be. Mm -hmm. But he says go. Because it's instructions that was given by the three mm -hmm. that were set out even before any of this would ever happen. Mm -hmm. yes. But he doesn't wait. So Joseph got up and took the child and his mother while it was still night. Mm -hmm. Now we're not talking about the spiritual perspective. We're talking about actual night, midnight. Mm -hmm. And left for Egypt. And he remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet out of Egypt. Call my son. Amen. Amen. Follow the Lamb. Follow the Lamb no matter where He calls because it's about the journey that we go with Him. We'll never understand it. But God is always good. Amen. Amen. And this is what He has to say to us now. You'll never understand it, but just come. Follow me. It will be the best adventure that you'll ever have. 
because I continue to call you just like our final song says, O come all ye faithful. So as our worship leaders come up, leave you with this final thoughts. It's not, O come as you think you should. O come as you might be able to. O come all ye faithful. And the faithful are those that continue to follow the Lamb until time ends and then beyond. Amen. 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 Am